Greetings, I'm Kaziz Varnellis, the director of the Network Architecture Lab and co-founder of AUDC. I'll be assisted in this course by Robert Sumrall, also co-founder of AUDC, architect and production designer. This studio is one in a continuing series, dealing with the urgent question of how to reconceive criticality, or at least the right to the word no, in today's world. Because no, that is nothing, may be all we have. In this radical present, a condition in which the past and the future become impossible to conceive of, critical architecture is so slow and expensive as to be non-existent or inconsequential. We seek other strategies, setting out to look within architecture to discover what intelligence it still has to offer. Our inspiration is the ambition and conceptual rigor of the best radical architecture of the 1960s, but with our world more extreme than anything the radicals could have expected, we need other strategies. We need to look at the world as it is, to learn from it. If today the building is an after-effect of media, our method is to go against logic and turn back to making buildings. The studio is conceptual, aimed at developing arguments and polemics, but it sets out to do so by using the tools of the architect. Dispensing with the prospect of realizing buildings as constructions of matter, we instead maintain that buildings can be constructions of thought, conceptual machines that produce arguments and state positions. Our studio's departure point is the fundamental question of complexity in modern society. The immediate background for this is the debate on infrastructure today and the potent difficulties that face new interventions in the city. Complex systems produced by modernity, it seems, have a life of their own, stymieing the process of building new infrastructures. But, to be clear, this is not at all a studio on infrastructure or systems. These play no role here. Instead, I just want to suggest that complex systems threaten us with a hyperspace exceeding anything architecture can produce or conceive. To ape it would be to engage in mere parody. Complex systems with their own potent drives threaten the very basis of society, requiring greater and greater energy levels to sustain. Modernism sought a way past this impasse hoping to find essences and undo complexity, using form to innovate beyond the crippling effects of an over-complex world. But modernism's processes of abstraction were incapable of handling the problems of post-war society. Too simple to cope with complexity, modernism did not fit well with modernity. We see the results of this at pruitt Igo. Since the 1960s, whether it be by registering the tensions of complexity by resolving such tensions or by embodying them in a smooth whole, the entirety of architecture is arguably a response to complexity. The studio goes beyond complexity. Complexity is far greater than anything architecture can solve. It overdetermines our lives. Anthropologist Joseph Tainter suggests that the only real solution to problems of societal complexity is technological innovation. But this is a fool's game, only forestalling the inevitable. When energy levels can no longer be met, societies collapse. We saw this at the fall of the Berlin Wall. This wasn't a revolution as much as people walking away from a system that was overcomplex and unsustainable. Communism fell overnight. But capitalism too has grown old, and the current economic crisis is the product of it shedding layers of complexity in an effort to rid itself of this cancer. It remains to be seen if we're successful, or if Detroit is the future, not the past. But there are other models, in particular, authoritarian regimes in which complexity can be overridden by force and state power are rising to the fore. Thus, CCTV, a structure that embodies the repressive power of the PRC state media for the 21st century. In other words, if the monuments of 20th century modernism aspire to a transparent, rational world of good, the monuments of the 21st century may aspire to evil. This is our studio topic. Evil, which seemed to be vanquished with the triumph of modernity and the end of ideology, now spreads. The only way past complexity, evil can no longer be confined. It permeates everything. As Mark Lombardi taught us, today's evil exists in networks, implicating us all in its tentacular reach. Itself a product of technology and a solution to the problem of complexity the technology brings, Today's evil is more uncontrollable than ever. 
adherence to a cynical reason, we embrace evil and its power. This studio looks at how one might design for an evil client. We will work with you to choose a client, a program, and a site. How do you build for evil? This is the Tempio Malatesta by the priest Leon Battista Alberti for the ruler Sigismondo Malatesta, who was excommunicated from the church for raping his daughters and sodomizing his sons-in-law, as well as doing many unspeakable horrific things to his people. There are obvious means of collaboration, Albert Speer. There are the less obvious means, Tirani. Can purity of form conquer architecture's associations with evil? Is evil something that falls away when buildings pass into history? Or is it best to just forget about it, as we did with Mies in his 1934 competition entry for the Brussels International Exposition, the badly drawn swastikas flying? Perhaps evil is an operating principle of everyday life. Philip Johnson at his glass house. How do architects deal with these questions? That is our studio this fall.